All right, good morning. We're gonna we're gonna do some yoga. Now, <laughs> our first thing is to turn my volume down. Our first thing we're gonna do this morning is we're gonna do butterfly. And um, we're gonna start with some yin poses. And yin butterfly, you have your heels about two hands length away from your groin. I always like to grab my shins first and just stretch my chest through my shoulders. Maybe you wanna drop your head too, but just feel a nice opening feeling. And then with your exhale, bring your chin to your chest and start to roll down, letting your head be heavy. And a lot of times as we come into a yin posture, we have to kind of fiddle around, make these small adjustments and then remind ourselves to soften and let go. So no pulling, no pushing, just being. So we start with the yin poses and they're only really yin compared to other styles of yoga and the end of our class. And yin is of the nature that it only has meaning really when it's compared to something yang. So what characterizes these first couple of postures are that we're coming into them differently, not that they're not part of the bigger kind of Bible of yoga postures that you can do very actively. But the, we use three principles when we're in a yin pose. The first you've already done, which you found the right shape for your body. And then after you've done your fiddling and adjustments, you just really wanna soften into the pose. And that's the set, second principle to really let go and soften, be as passive as you possibly can in the posture. And then the third principle is to stay. And just to be clear, we wanna stay through being like kind of uncomfortable situations, but we don't wanna stay through acute painful situations. So if there's sharp pain, get out. <laughs> But if you're annoyed or bored or just irritated, then stay. Good morning. Feel your head heavy, feel your tongue heavy, maybe feel your elbows heavy. So we start with yin, just like we did in our life, where we started in the womb, we lingered, we took our time before we come out into the fiery challenges. Of the outside world. So allow your next couple breaths just to kind of Notice what's going on in the inside of you this morning. I'd often tell people that you can actually really start class kind of being half asleep here. With your next inhale, roll up and just place your elbows back behind you. Maybe wiggle them in a little bit closer. And then if it's okay for your neck, just drop your head back. If it's too much for your neck, you can always keep your chin to your chest. And the cool thing is you can try it out. And if it's then too much, you can bring your chin up to your chest. So you wanna have your knees dropping out your chest opening, your neck relaxing. It's okay to keep your eyes closed in these first yin postures. And 
take a moment to observe what you noticed in the last kind of scan of the insides of your body. And now let's go through it a little bit more systematically. So with your next couple of breaths, just notice, can you remember any of your dreams? And you can notice perhaps they're like different layers of dreams. There might be a story or stuff or a place. Things that make sense, things that don't make sense. Fragments that are relational. Places from the past or people from the past. And maybe notice if your dreams left you with a certain feeling this morning. And then let your elbows slide out to the sides, bring your hands to your belly or one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. Your knees still dropping out to the sides. And just take a couple moments and observe in your wakingness now how your thinking is. So maybe you've just been awake a couple of minutes. And so you haven't had so much time to, you know, think deep thoughts perhaps. Or maybe that's all you can do. <laughs> But instead of examining the nature of what you're thinking, you wanna examine more the nature of how you're thinking. So some mornings I wake up and it's like, I wake up, like jump into my to-do list. So it's a very practical kind of linear goal-oriented thinking. Or other days, it's as if my attention is spinning around one theme or one thing. With your next inhale, bring your hands to prayer. Mm -hmm. And then um, straighten your arms straight up to the ceiling. Like you, you have like a beautiful plant spreading from your heart. And then lift up your head a little bit and lift up your feet. Still feet pushing together. Nice example pair. And see that little magical space in between your feet. Pretend like you can dive into it. Yeah, you're a natural and up you are in a nice seated position. And from here, you're gonna stretch your, right, your left leg long and keep your right heel, maybe pull your right heel a little bit closer. And you're gonna to turn to your bent knee. So really turn there and then blind, you're gonna reach for your left leg and then slide your hand down your left leg, your left arm down the left leg. And then reach up with your right arm and maybe drape your arm over your ear if that's too intense or too electrified, you always can relax your right arm and wrap it behind you. But you wanna feel a nice stretch along your, uh, your muscles, that's where we stretch, but along your ribs. And that's also another variation where you hold the back of your head. But if it's really too much for your arm, you, you're welcome to drop your arm down and just wind it behind you. The key here is not to lose heart. Yes, beautiful, Frida. So while we're not losing heart, take some time to just observe what your feelings are. Your emotions that you woke up with.
And we're very skilled at thinking about our feelings, but we're not so skilled at actually feeling our feelings. So just notice, okay, you know, feeling joyful or sad. And then often, at least for myself, I slide up into my story, meaning making brain. Instead, see how that sadness feels like in your chest, in your physicality. If there was a color you needed to assign to how you feel this morning, what color would it be? And then release your right arm down and take a little dance. Maybe you're feeling a little hippie this morning. You want to make some little hippie dance. Maybe you want to do your riff me, whatever, but move around a little bit on your upper body. Like you're conducting, you know, magical symphonies of angels here. And then twist over your extended leg and bow forward, feeling a nice hamstring stretch on your left leg. So you have about 90 degrees between your thighs. And if you are um, blessed with a nice, open, flexible dancer body, you're always welcome to put your foot into the inside of your thigh for half, half lotus in this position. Coax your right shoulder to be a little heavier than it, we tend to make it here. You can do that by twisting a little bit more to your left. You can even just drape your right arm over your left leg so your right arm's on the outside. And then relax, relaxing it, it kind of pulls you a little bit more into that twist there. Notice if you can soften your tongue and your jaw and let your head really hang. And then take a couple moments and really notice how your physical body is doing this morning. So notice where you're feeling perhaps sore or strong. Notice the overall energy of your body. And then with your inhale, roll up and place your right hand behind you. Stretch up with your left arm and really reach the whole left side of your body. And then with your exhale, bring your hips back down and switch your legs. So again, you have about 90 degrees between your thighs. And first we're gonna turn towards the bent leg, the left leg, and then trusting we know where to go Stretch your right arm along your right leg, maybe all the way to your toes. Feel your head dropping towards your right leg and then stretch your left arm up and maybe drape it over your ear or wrap it behind your back. Allow yourself the little wiggles to come into the pose. And then again, see how much you can soften the posture. So some of us are lucky enough that we get close enough to our hand, or sorry, close enough to our thigh on the right hand side that we can just bend our elbow and hold our head. Others of us need an extra bolster in between there. You wanna feel that you're letting your left hip be really heavy.
Notice where you get contracted and tense up. And then soften. You can even practice noticing where you're, um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna say it, but notice where you're doing it wrong or you're not really paying attention or, and instead of giving yourself a hard time about it, be like, oh, I'm so happy I noticed it. And then you can fix it. I'm finding that we are so skilled at noticing all the stuff we're doing wrong and forgetting to do and that we're very unskilled at celebrating that when we find mistakes and correct them, that's awesome. Not getting weighted down by making mistakes because that's what we learn. And then rise up and find your little dance. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more punk, need some fists and some high elbows. Or just like floppy arms. <laughs> And then bow over your beautiful extended right leg, letting your head be heavy, your elbows be heavy, your tongue be fat. One of my favorite, one of my favorite stories is talking about this, two of my friends who they were both uh, chefs um, working in a restaurant and they had an intern. I think the, the intern was a, like a 14 year old boy, maybe 15, being a good kid, really just really wanting to do everything right. And I remember these two chefs sitting down and they were like, yeah, um, they were talking about him. They're like, yeah, he really screwed up but how can we tell him in a way that makes him not scared of screwing up again? That makes him realize that sometimes our mistakes really are what lead us exactly to the right place and especially to learning things. And it was just, it was just this magical conversation that I wish all teachers would have, that we could really change the way that we frame learning. That how can we celebrate mistakes, not because they're wrong and uh, a mistake and so counterculture, but really that we learn and experience and remember so much from the things we've screwed up. You know, whether it's in cooking or like, you know, relationships. It's the, it's the screw ups, it's the mistakes that actually really stick with you. And can give you these aha insight moments. And then inhale, roll up. This time place your left hand behind you and stretch through the whole right side of your body. And then with your exhale, bring your hips back down, cross your ankles, maybe slide towards the back of your yoga mat if you're not there already and come into child's pose. So you have your knees wide, big toes touching. Make the small adjustments to make this posture work for you. And then slide your hands together in prayer and bend your elbows to bring your thumbs to the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. And just take a moment in the privacy of your 
of the darkness of your own thinking of your own world here. Take a moment to either say a prayer or a dedication in your practice. or really kind of aim your practice at what you're working on and trying to invite into your life. And then release your arms and start to roll up and come into a, a seated position sitting on your heels. So we're just gonna take it not so intense today. I mean, if you really want to, you can tuck your toes under, but just sitting in sesa pose here on your heels, hands can relax on your knees. So we're transitioning from our yin class to our yang class. So bring your hands together and we start this really this heating up and this warming up and this fiery nature in even the sound of our ohms. So push both your palms together in this style so you can feel the inside of both of your hands and drop your elbows down. Let your heart lift up, let your chest lift up, close your eyes, empty your breath all the way and let's sound three ohms. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Uh, and then release your hands down and place your hands directly underneath your shoulders and your knees directly underneath your hips and come into a tabletop and then start to wiggle your tabletop. Mm -hmm. So like sassy tabletop, just sliding your hips side to side, your shoulders side to side. And then maybe start to see if you can do a rib roll. <laughs> yep. So rolling your ribs counterclockwise, rolling your ribs clockwise. Mm -hmm, making circles. And don't worry, if you get this wrong, you're going to be wiggling in a nice warming way anyways. <laughs> Beautiful. And then come to a neutral spine. First, feel you, you're still connected with your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And then inhale, lift up your head, your heart and your hips coming into cow, feel your sit bones separating. And with your exhale, push the ground away, arch your back, pull your belly up, chin to your chest to cat. Inhale into cow. And then exhale into cat. And then inhale into cow. And then exhale into cat. And then come to a neutral spine. And you're gonna push your right heel back with your legs straight and just pulse a couple times and turn your fingers so they point back towards your knee. And then straighten your fingers back out, bend, you're gonna lift up your right leg, bend your knee, and then just pulse your heel up to the ceiling a couple times. Yeah, like you're trying to like, Raise the roof, uh-huh, <laughs> get it going, <laughs> beautiful. It's not usually what we do, so it's a little strange for you. Take another full inhale, and with your exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Inhale, kick it up behind you. Exhale, pull your knee into your nose. 
Inhale, kick your leg behind you. One more time. Exhale, pull your knee to your nose. And then you're gonna step your right foot behind your left toes and come into supported plank on the left hand side. Beautiful. Now feel free to stay here, but if you wanna try a little bit more, see if you can shift your weight into your left knee and raise your right leg. And then turn your right palm to the ground and stretch your arm over your ear. Feeling a nice stretch from your fingertip to your, to your heel. And with your exhale, bend your elbow and knee and tap them together. Inhale, stretch your right limbs. Exhale, bend your right elbow and knee, tap them together in front of you. Inhale, stretch long. Exhale, tap them in. Inhale, stretch long. Now this time, stretch your right arm straight up to the sky, bend your right knee, and then reach back and see if you can hold onto your foot just like you did. Yes, very nice. Just check it out. What does that feel like? And then gracefully extend your right limbs again. And with your exhale, bring your right hand down to the ground. Keep your right leg lifted. And we're gonna do a supported weird chaturanga with your right leg in the air. Just touch your chin to the, to the ground and then reach it back up and then switch your legs. Mm -hmm. So switch your legs, I mean, bring your right leg down and then stretch your left leg long. Pulse through your heel. So you're just pulsing through your heel a couple of times and you can feel it kind of stretch your calf. Yeah, your calf is one of the muscles that rarely relaxes, like ever. <laughs> All right. And then reach your left leg long behind you. And then bend your knee. Bend your knee <laughs> and pulse up to the ceiling, trying to kick your heel. Like you're really trying to push the ceiling higher with the bottom of your foot without doing anything weird with your arms yet, pair love. So keep your arms stretched out. <laughs> yes. And it's a weird little pulse. Gorgeous. And then with your next exhale, bring your bent left knee to your nose. And then bigger kick it up into your nose. Kick it up into your nose, kick it up. One more time, into your nose, kick it up, and then lengthen your left leg and spin your left foot behind your right toes and stretch your left arm up to the air. Gorgeous. And then maybe you want a little bit more here and you can start to let your top leg float up into the air. And we're gonna do these weird crunches first. So spin your left palm to the ground, stretch your arm long. And then with your exhale, bring your elbow and knee together. Inhale, stretch long, exhale, stretch. Yeah, <laughs> let's try that again. Inhale, stretch long, exhale, tap it in. Inhale, stretch long, exhale, tap it in. Sorry, I was a poor counter today. I think we just do one more for good luck. Tap it in and then stretch it out. Stretch your left arm straight up to the sky first and then bend your left knee and see if you can grab your left ankle behind you. And so you can feel that your hips can thrust a little bit forward because you're holding onto your leg. Find a joyful expression in it. And if you're wobbling and falling, embrace those moments too. And then extend your limbs first. And with your exhale, keep your left leg lifted, bring your left hand down. So your right knee's on the ground and you're gonna drop your chin and your chest really to the ground. So it's a weird chaturanga like thing. And then pulse back up and then bring your knee down. And then do a little sassy cow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's like you wanna keep your heart lifting, maybe your head lifting. Gorgeous. And then tuck your toes and just start to tick tock your knees. Very nice. If that's too much, you can drop one down, drop the other one down. And then keeping your knees very low, but floating over the yoga mat, push your hips back and then start to straighten your legs out into downward facing dog. Very nice. Take a full breath in. And with the exhale, just sigh it out through your mouth. <sighs> so find a small bend in your knees and notice this helps you really stick your butt in the air. 
you want to imagine or my latest imaginations that have like you know stars tattooed on my butt that want to go back up to the sky but you can use whatever imagination you need to use to make it make sense in your body it's just my imagination i don't have those tattoos yet all right take another full inhale empty your breath all the way and then look forward and just lightly hop your feet in between your hands yes Inhale, halfway lift, drag your chest forward. And with your exhale, release and bow down. And then step your feet so they're about hip distance apart. And hook your hands into the crooks of your elbows. With your knees a little bit bent, like a micro bend. Just this time, tick tock your upper body side to side. I mean, this is nice. You really can feel like one of those like grandfather clocks. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. And then with your exhale, release your hands. And just to keep, keep going on that TikTok theme, let your head <laughs> drop and then stretch your right leg out to the side, put it back down, stretch your left leg out to the side. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> very good, very good. So just a couple more. I always feel like those, you know, those silver balls on the <laughs> desktop. Tick, 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 tick. One more, and then bring your feet back together. Micro bend your knees, push down with your feet and roll up one vertebrae at a time. Stretch your fingers up to the ceiling, lift your gaze up to the ceiling. And with your exhale, come back to center. Bring your hands to heart center, let your elbows be heavy. And at the end of your exhale, your hands drop. And we're ready for sun A. Inhale, stretch your arms up high. Exhale, bow down, let your head drop and your knees are soft. Inhale, halfway lift, drag your chest forward, shoulders away from your ears. And then step back to plank. So with plank, you wanna get as many muscles as involved at holding you here in this lovely shape. Feel your fingers spread out, your heels reaching back, your chest reaching forward, lifting up between your shoulder blades, and then inch forward to the tips of your toes like you're nearly gonna fall off them. And this time drop your knees, chin and chest. So both knees on the ground, same version, Ashtanga Namaskar. Yeah. Then yes, perfect. Then inhale, low cobra. So slide forward, push your toenails into the ground so your knees are floating and lift your chest up. With your exhale, come back down to the ground and then take your hands out for diva cobra. And then inhale, lift up. So you have like a big collar. Yes, let your head lift up and then exhale, come down. And then slide your hands back, inhale baby or adolescent cobra <laughs> and then exhale downward facing dog coming through your knees or through a chaturanga thanks pair again just notice take a full breath in maybe sigh it out feel where you can be active in your posture to enliven the pose and then push down and forward a little bit with your hands and your heels are falling towards the ground. They never have to get there, but the reach is what animates your body. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, and then hop your feet quietly in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, drag your chest forward and your shoulders back, flat back. Exhale, release and bow down, let your head drop. Push down with your feet, roll up to the sky, maybe touch the ceiling, yay. And then with your exhale, hands to heart center. And at the end of your exhale, your chin's lifted, drop your hands down. Inhale, stretch your arms up, your gaze lifts. Exhale, dive down or bow forward, whichever one works for your practice. Inhale, halfway lift, feel your shoulders move away from your ears, flat back, hands connect to your shins. And then either jump to chaturanga or step to plank and lower down chaturanga. Yeah. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra fingers spread out. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
find a little micro bend in your knees or even dance your knees out a couple of times. So sometimes in our downward facing dog, we really need to have stillness for ourselves. And other times like you wanna allow movement in wiggling out the stale parts. Now fuel up, let your heels lift up with your inhale, let your exhale empty you out, bend your knees, keep your thighs close to your chest and jump your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, drag your chest forward. Notice it's drag, it's a lot of work sometimes. Exhale, release and drop your head. Reach down with your heels, roll up to the sky, get long and with your exhale, samasthi tihi. And then bend your knees and drop down low enough that your fingertips touch the ground. Now imagine you have someone actually holding your hips. Oh, that'd be nice. And then inhale, lift up your chest. Now feel this kind of dichotomy between your hips wanna come down to the ground. So let them drop a little bit. And instead of dropping your heart with it, reach your chest up in the opposite direction. Take another full inhale and with your exhale, take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers, lift your heart up and with your exhale, bow forward. Knuckles reaching for the ground. Now releasing your hands will give you a little bit of momentum as you inhale, release your hands, lift up. Ooh, katasana, keep your hips low. And then with your exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift, feel your abdominals already getting engaged and then either jump to chaturanga or step to plank and lower down chaturanga or ashtanga namaskar. Inhale, <laughs> upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky and bend your knee and let your hips just open up your hip. We've got one right hip each. Now you wanna feel that your right foot is active, trying to squeeze your heel to your buttocks. You might even feel that you're, you're pulling your, your hips apart here. And then see if maybe you can lift up onto your right fingertips. Yeah, I know, it does something, doesn't it? And then bring your right hand down. And then inhale, lift up to your left fingertips. Notice how your weight squared out more. And then maybe just slap the bottom of your right foot with your left hand or grab it <laughs> or just think about it. And then with your exhale, bring your right knee all the way to your nose and then plant your right foot in between your thumbs. And you might add a little drama here. You open up warrior two, ta-da. Turn your gaze over your middle finger on your right hand. Let's take a full breath here. Inhale, find your strength. Exhale, where do you surrender? Tuck your booty. Yeah. And then take another full fueling inhale and exhale, sweet chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your glorious left leg up to the sky. And then bend your knee and let your hips spin open. So notice when you first go, it's like everything is like, oh, we're opening, we're going this way. And instead try to bring it a little bit into balance again. So first come up to your left fingertips. Notice how they nearly want to come up there. It's because your whole body wants to flip open. And then bring your left hand down to the mat and lift up onto your right fingertips. Notice how that actually squares your shoulders more. Hopefully not your hips. Feel your right heel earthing down and then maybe reach back to slap the bottom of your foot like a little like therapeutic slap or hold onto your foot for a moment here. And then with your next exhale, let go of your foot, beautiful head wake, and bring your knee to your nose, belly lifts up, it's a little bit of cat, yeah? And step your foot in between your thumbs, rise up with a little drama, warrior two, and turn your gaze over your left arm, reach through your fingertips like you're trying to grow your nails longer, and then tuck your tail underneath you. Yeah, very much, very much, yeah, mm -hmm, good language. 
to make you feel empowered. Then inhale and exhale all the way down to I love Chaturanga, or it might someday. And then inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. I just read in a book that was talking about like, you know, you want, a, you want a better relationship. You want a more loving, trusting relationship. And that's what you need so you can be more honest. And the book was like, no, you have to be honest to get that. But the cool thing is that's not entirely, yes, that's true. But if you act more loving, I promise you'll actually be more loving. It doesn't have to come first as, a, as like a thing that happens to you. It can actually be something you cultivate. So take a full inhale, empty your breath all the way and lightly hop your feet in between your hands. Drag your chest forward, halfway lift, feel like you're breathing into the back of your lungs. And with your exhale, bow down, let your head drop. And then bend your knees, drop your booty, inhale, ooh, katasana. And let's see if we can breathe and rest here for a moment. So we're starting to get a little fiery, I hope. Imagine you really are sitting on a chair, often confused with a bar stool. So your toes are light, the weights in your heels, you can feel that your spine is lined up over your heels. Take a inhale and with your next exhale, open arm twist to your right. Notice how your knees want to go wee to balance you out. Instead, bring them back to center by lovingly pulling your left knee back. Now stay low. Inhale. Ooh, katasana. And with your exhale, open arm twist to your left. It can feel a little dramatic. Like, ah. Find the weight in your heels. Maybe lift up your toes. And then inhale. Ooh, katasana. Low with your hips. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float, exhale, sweet chaparanga or ashtanga namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra, knees lifted off the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. And with your exhale, bend your knee and take your right knee to your right elbow. And we're going for the box. To the left elbow, to the left wrist, to the right wrist, up to the elbow and back to three-legged dog. Oh, you want to review? Good idea. With your exhale, bend your right knee, bring your right knee to your right elbow, to your left elbow, to your left wrist, to your right wrist, up to your right elbow, and inhale, three like a dog. Nice. There's one more variation. With your exhale, bend your knee and take your right knee to your left elbow, and then make a box. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Perfect. And then with your exhale, step your right foot in between your thumbs, windmill up, warrior two. Your lower body stays strong and steadfast. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then pop your right heel up. Keep looking upward unless it hurts your neck, then look at your back heel. And then you're gonna bring your right heel down and you're gonna let your left hit a heel slide up and you're going to come into this kind of um I always think of this as a Nike pose <laughs> don't know why but imagine you have wings you're reaching them back you're in crescent lunge legs and your abdominals are really nice and controlled here now take a full inhale maybe step your right foot in a little bit and with your exhale see if you can extend and float up into airplane with your next exhale, bring your hands to heart center and start to bow down, Ikapada Uttanasana, standing splits. So your hands, once you bowed forward, can drop to the ground if you want, or you can hold onto your ankle, or you can even give yourself dramatic airplane arms. So airplane arms is you're not holding on to anything, your, your hands are going straight back with your leg. Now everyone release your hands down to the ground. Don't overthink this too much. Inhale, halfway lift. Now you're gonna jump back to a three-legged chata, three chataranga by lifting your left leg into the sky first. Beautiful, nicely done. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Add a little bend to your knees to feel the release here. Take a full breath in. And with your exhale, side out. Now, great. First, we're gonna do some boxing. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your left knee and bring your left knee to your left elbow, to your right elbow, down to your right wrist, to your left wrist, up to your elbow and back up three-legged dog. All right, exhale, do it again. So left elbow, right elbow, right wrist, left wrist, left elbow, ta-da! And now do it, your free form box. Bring your knee forward, whatever shape or box you want there. <laughs> and then inhale, stretch your right left leg long. And with your exhale, step your left foot in between your left thumbs, windmill up, warrior two, ta-da! And then inhale, reverse your warrior and pop your left heel. Gorgeous. Now, so now with your next exhale, you're gonna bring your left heel down, lift up your right heel and reach your hands behind you. So this is still a very active pose. You wanna feel like you're hinging forward, pushing the ground away with your palms and then shift your weight forward to your left foot and fly into airplane. So you get really active with your right leg. That's gonna help you feel light here. With your next exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Nice alignment, Akiko, and start to hinge forward. Now you either drop your hands down to the ground or you stretch them back out so your arms are reaching past your hips toward your extended leg. So bring your arms closer to your body. Yeah, okay, so those aren't really airplane, don't really have it so tight, but gorgeous. Now everybody, bring your hands to the ground and you feel like you really kick your right leg up to get lots of room to exhale three-legged chaturanga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> Exhale, downward facing dog. And now just start to just lightly take little jumping jacks. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said little, but you can go a little bigger. Now you wanna land quietly. If that's too much for you, you can step one foot out and pull it in, one foot out and pull it back in. Do it like that, but in downward facing dog. And if you're not sure, you just make it up because what happens is you start to move and your body just starts to go, oh yeah, I like being this hot actually. For five, four, three, Two, okay, and now keep jumping as you start to bring your feet a little further back and you find yourself jumping into a plank. <laughs> oh yeah, very nice. And then see if you can bring your elbows down to the ground. Oh yeah. <laughs> now with your elbows on the ground, step your feet together and roll to the outside edge of your left foot and stretch your right arm up to the sky. Baby Vashistasana. Gorgeous. Now, if you feel stable, maybe you bend your right knee. Yes, oh, fertilizer. <laughs> Absolutely. And then come back to your form. Plank. Do -do 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 -do. All right, other side, roll to the outside of your right foot. Stretch your arm high. <laughs> and if you have a little, if you want a little challenge, you can bend or lengthen and lift your top leg. And then come back. <laughs> and replace your elbows with your hands and reach back to downward facing dog. Oh, that was nice, well done. And then inhale, slide forward into plank. Exhale, lower down, chataranga. Inhale up into plank. Oh, it's hard, yeah. Plank, it's a little different than up dog. All right, let's do that one more time. Exhale, chataranga. You can drop your knees to the ground if you need to. And then inhale up into plank. Did I say one more time? Let's do it one more time. 
lower down, all the way up into plank. And then lower as slow as you can, all the way down. Yeah, oh, the floor should feel pretty nice. Turn your gaze to one side or the other. Take a full breath in. And with your exhale, sigh out. <sighs> All right, and now we're gonna roll our arms underneath our body. So we're coming towards the locust pose or locust variation. So roll your hands underneath you. And um, you can either have your hands flat against the yoga mat, so you're pushing your hands down, or you can make small, like open fists. And then bend your right knee and stretch your right leg up and extend your leg. I don't know why I said bend your right knee. Just lift your right leg. The bend is coming now. So bend your left knee and see if you can wiggle your left foot underneath your right thigh. So it's like you're helping yourself. And then, and then straighten your right leg again, Akiko. Yeah, very nice. So, so Frida, maybe slide your, see how he has it underneath his leg? So that your right leg is resting on your left foot. If you've ever done Bikram yoga, it's like cheating in a Bikram class. So take your foot to the other side of your leg. Yay. All right, now that she's got it, gently release. <laughs> Let's do the other side. So maybe you need to wiggle your arms underneath you a little bit more. The palms are pushing down. You have them perfectly there. And then inhale, lift up your left leg. You want to still feel your left hip pushing down towards the ground or your arm. And then bend your right knee and see if you can snake your right foot underneath your left leg. So it's like you're kind of helping yourself out. Now really let your weight come towards your shoulders. And then release. And this time you're gonna wiggle your arms even more underneath you and then put one hand over the other hand. This will really help. And bring your chin towards your chest and it's either your mouth or your forehead is on the ground. And then roll your weight forward as much as you can and start to squeeze your legs together. And it really feels like you're more extending your legs than lifting them, but up they go. Push with the ball of your big toes, especially if you're a little bow-legged, squeeze your heels together. Imagine you have the world's heaviest shoulders. I know, it's not something we usually dream about. And then gently release, that should feel awesome. Roll your hands out from underneath you, make sure your fingers all still work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so close. Our time is pretty much about to be up. So just to round out our back bending, kick up your feet and grab onto your feet. If your lower back is sensitive, really think about maybe keeping your knees on the ground and then kick your feet into your hands and lift up. Try to bring your toes closer together, yeah. Maybe a hint of a smile, reach with your balls or your feet up, lift up, flexing your feet if your knees are on the ground. If you're not keeping your knees on the ground, point your toes, push the balls of your big toes forward, Frida. So push this part of your foot forward. Yeah, beautiful. And then come down onto the ground, roll onto your back. You might have to scoot back onto your yoga mat. And then we're gonna do an elegant transition here. Bring your knees to your chest. And you're gonna roll about five and a half times to come all the way so your head is where your feet were. Your feet is where your head are, was. And with your knees still in your chest, you're gonna take your arms out to a T and just slowly drop your knees to the left, keeping your right shoulder on the ground if you can. Very, very nice. So let your knees drop all the way to the ground. 
And once your knees are on the ground, take your gaze in the opposite direction. You wanna make sure your knees are as high as your hips. Yeah, and that way you should feel the twist more in your spine. So maybe we got a little fiery, got a little challenged. I hope so, that's part of what my job is here. And then hug your knees back up to center, maybe lift up your face and kiss your knees. Thank you for getting you this far in life. It's amazing how exquisite your body is, how wise your body is. And now stretch your arms back out and slowly drop your knees to the other side. For most of us, it's the right-hand side. Take your knees to the ground, trying to let your left shoulder be heavy and then take your gaze away from your knees. And even just notice, take a full inhale and with your exhale, just sigh it out. Oh. So we wanna practice at this place where it's, it's you're not quite sure if you can do it or not. You know, that place where you get breathless and challenged and hot. We're practicing for those really, those squeeze moments in our life where we have to effort to be fully of our, ourselves and be fully present. And then hug your knees back to center and stretch your legs long. Find your way into Shavasana. Your palms open to receive or resting on your belly. If your lower back is sore, Sabina Love, you can bend your knees and have your feet as wide as the yoga mat with your knees dropping back together. Feel the solidness of the ground supports you. And instead of drifting away and pretending to go to sleep or finding that spot, you actually wanna see if you can stay relaxed and present. So noticing the different sounds in your house, in the room.
With your next inhale, invite your breath to the edges of your body. Start to maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes and smile or just wiggle your nose. And then stretch your arms long over your head on the inhale, feeling your heels reach away from your hands. And on the exhale, we'll curl into a ball and roll onto your side and just pause for a moment, really being able to feel the vibrancy and magic and all of your energy here. And then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Allow your hands to find their way to heart center. Feel the length in your spine as you root down to rise up. And let's cl close our class with one final ohm. So empty your breath. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye. Invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say, Namaste. And so much love. Make some noise. Slap the ground. Energetically clear your space. Yay. Well done. If you're sore, come do it again. And I promise the soreness really does go away. I, um, I love now when I can do a yoga class that makes me sore. I mean, it's, and it's not even that, you know, you don't have to be in such amazing shape to not get sore every day. But just when you start practicing on a regular basis, it takes a while for the practice to come into your body. So weird things come up, especially in the beginning of your practice. But after having a consistent practice, usually for about like three months or so, you'll find that you really don't get as sore that often. Um, magnesium can help as well as eating bananas. <laughs> um, helps with training work uh, with uh, sore muscles. And of course, obviously, drink lots of water. All right, love bugs, be well. <laughs>